What's up, Bitcoin Radio? Guess what? Episode zero is here. This is your host, Joe Blackburn. I would like to welcome everybody to the Bitcoin Hour, your new home for crypto news, notes, and entertainment. I am, as stated above, your host, Joe Blackburn, and you're listening to WBTC, where Bitcoin lives. All right, everybody. It's just I, I had to give that a shot. Welcome to Bitcoin Radio. Uh, this is episode zero. Uh, I expect to uh, to really be able to lay out what we're doing here this time, and uh, and to really give everybody some insight on what we've been creating behind the scenes a little bit. Um, recently, I just divulged to the community that this was happening. I have had to keep this a secret now for just about two months, and I'm going to tell you right now, especially since most of you listening to this. Y'all know me. You know who I am. You know me from CCT, Crypto Coin Trader. Um, but, and for those of you who might not, I will get into a little bit of my background here in a little bit. But, uh, but I've really made a point and an effort to surround myself with great people and people who are doing this for the right reasons. Um, I think everybody who's familiar with Crypto Coin Trader as a Facebook group, that community, that culture that's been created in there, that wasn't by mistake. Right. We we've had we surrounded ourselves with good people, good moderators, good admins and good members. And that's what I've always said. Crypto, Bitcoin, blockchain needs. We need people who recognize that other good people around us are what makes this space great, because even from the very beginning, if you look at the history of Bitcoin, it's all been peer to peer. Even to this day, although we are branching out and big, big company, big techs, big, big whatever is getting into this business now. For the longest time, I just remember it being me and you. And it's always felt that way to me. And I've never lost that feeling. There's a couple things about this that I really want to make sure that everybody grasps. But I've first got to do something that's really cool. I have to give a great shout out to our very first sponsor, Ledger. So obviously, big shout out, Ledger. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. We appreciate it so much. Um, let's let's kind of talk a little bit about what Bitcoin is. And one of the things that Bitcoin radio wants to be able to, uh, uh, to, to just really perform, like to, to really grow and be is that voice for everybody. If you know anything about crypto, Bitcoin, you know, big tech, I mean, even if you're not in this space, you understand that sometimes there's a learning curve. And I feel like a lot of the experts in this space have, have lost the ability to really connect to that, that, basic, you know, entry level individual, so the, maybe the person who's just looking to, to throw a few thousand bucks into something that maybe it'll get bigger one day. Right. Cause I can tell you this much. That's how I got in. Me personally, I was like, well, I got an extra thousand dollars. What's this Bitcoin stuff. And although I don't recommend doing it like that, I jumped head first and, and, and you know, it, and then once I got in, I started understanding what this was actually about. And I, I wanted to start off this, this episode zero with, um, I wanted to to go back to this this article that was written on Hacker Noon by Trent Lipinski. Uh, he he wrote this and submitted it. I think it was from December first, twenty seventeen. I don't know Trent personally. Um, in fact, I don't even know if he's written anything else besides this. And Trent, if you've ever listened to this man, big shout out because what you wrote that day has stayed with me for quite some time. And I'll read the first paragraph here, and it's it's just explaining what Bitcoin is, just simplifying it and breaking it down, and allowing people to understand what it is, and if you can grasp this concept, people like you can really, you can really make a difference in the way that you're explaining this. And so I'll start off with the first paragraph and I'll get into the second paragraph here in a little bit, but just starting with this, it, it goes like this. And I, and I quote, Bitcoin is just software. It's an incorruptible computer program, distributed database and ledger system based on cryptography. It's almost like a puzzle that by design creates, creates digital scarcity. The more people participate, the harder it becomes to generate and mine new coins. Boom. I'll stop right there for right this second. Listen to that. I will make sure I post this link at some point. And this kind of shapes the beginning of episode zero. We are, we are about to give you a pre-show to what to expect for Bitcoin Radio as the future lays its course. And to do that with me, I have brought in the co-founder of uh, Mouse Belt. Mouse Belt has... Uh, has created a uh, a another arm to their uh, their company, and it's called Mouse Belt Media. And there's a lot of other people involved besides uh, my good friend Patrick McLean. But Patrick is here with us today, and uh, we're going to go through this. We're going to kind of break down the inspiration behind Bitcoin Radio and what we expect out of this. And so, uh, Pat, uh, I think that you're on. Let's uh, let's hear from you, man. How's it going? 
Good. How you doing, Joe? Man, I am doing great. It's episode zero. We're finally here, Pat. We made it, man. Dude, I'm very excited to be the first guest. Oh, there's there's my little round of applause from the other side of the world. Cheer. Congratulations, by the way. Well, thank you very much, Pat. Definitely couldn't be here without you. And I'm privileged that you chose me to uh, to do this with, man. No, we're, we're definitely lucky. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners here, especially in the beginning, are uh, going to be from your, you know, your Facebook group, Crypto Coin Trader. And I would say, you know, to all those people, they've obviously watched you now for almost two years really grow that community and, um, you know, really push it forward and be a neutral voice. So uh, I'm sure everybody's going to appreciate what you're doing with Bitcoin Radio and uh, definitely happy to be the first guest and feel very honored. Well, Pat, again, you are one of the biggest reasons behind all this. I remember uh, what about a year ago when we really first started getting into some deeper discussions and really aligning ourselves. Like we were, we were figuring out where all this stood between the two of us. And before you know it, you know, a year later, you know, we're sitting there and you're like, "Hey, come to Thailand. Let's sit. Let's sit down and actually talk about this." So I, I got on a plane, flew out there, and, and you know, before the first day was over, I think we had had something already figured out. And of course, right, we'll get into some of the team here in a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot of people involved, as I mentioned earlier, and it, it's it's a perfect team. It's been nothing but creation, excitement, creativity. I mean, it's it's all there, man. All the pieces are, the, are, are there. And I can't even begin to tell everybody what this is going to be because we're still writing this. You know, there's still a lot to be told that we have yet to even discover. Just like any great show, any great idea, we have something special and we're going to run with it. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I'm definitely be uh, happy to be a part of it. And you know, as you mentioned about Mousebolt, um, you know, our vision's really been to be a leader in the entire blockchain industry. And um, this covers multiple parts, right? So whether it's accelerating the best projects, um, trying to help prepare the future leaders of tomorrow with what we're doing in uh, universities all across the world, um, and now really starting to highlight success stories through this media platform and what we're kind of building together with Bitcoin Radio. Uh, and I'll also add, you know, obviously you're aware, um, you know, we have one of the largest engineering teams in the world for blockchain as well. So our goal has always really been to push the industry forward. And uh, that's what we really hope uh, to see happen with Bitcoin Radio. Exactly. So that, that kind of leads me into the very first point is what is Bitcoin Radio? And I kind of alluded to just that that understanding of we want to include all we want to include all voices right now. We want to understand what you want to hear and and, and it at times give you the mic because I look at where we're at right now in crypto and I and I, I'll be the first one to say I couldn't be here without others, period, whether it be Patrick, or whether it be many people in front of me that that shaped and, and paved the way for so many of us to enjoy this space today. Right. If you if you enjoy crypto, if you're in here for the reasons that, you know, that wh whether it just be for trading because you enjoy that thrill and that rush, or if you really find that principle and and base a lot of what you believe off of what what I what I personally see as, you know, a really awesome opportunity to kind of take back something. This is kind of surreal to me in a lot of ways. And it's not often that I have trouble really explaining this, but, you know, right now I kind of I feel that nostalgia around what this is and. Let me ask you something. If you were to if you were to think back five years ago and realize that there was a piece of technology that had already been created that would give you the opportunity to buy on an individual basis, have a say so in what's going to happen next. I mean, you're right there, man. You're in the middle of creating and you're in the middle of of really just cultivating a in this in the company with Mouse Belt and among other things that you're involved in. You you're you're on the front lines, man. Right. Both of us are. But. What is the inspiration behind where you see Bitcoin Radio and what and, and really what Mousebelt is? Because I don't really see there's a probably not much of a a difference in um in that personal you know satisfaction between the two. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, I think when we look at the the name of this episode, right? Uh, you and me talked about it, and we were kind of joking at first, but but the name kind of ended up as like the war. The war, right? And and right, so we'd say maybe you know what is what is this war? Is there a war inside of Bitcoin and blockchain? And and you know I would argue that that there is. Um, last week, you know, the president of the United States was commenting about Bitcoin in in a slightly demeaning way. Um, the Treasury Secretary of America called cryptocurrencies a national security threat last year. Uh, India has recently imposed an all-out ban, uh, and China has been been playing with their positioning in the market from day one. Um, so I think it's it's very clear that there that there's a war on one side from both world and private banks, and, and the implications of, of what Bitcoin uh, and other various cryptocurrencies, you know, and the impact they're going to have. Um, I think there is a war war for our data. 
right? So as we enter the world where uh, we're getting increasingly worried of both Facebook and Google owning our data, uh, we have the opportunity to own our own it ourselves, right? Uh, uh, the private keys that we manage our Bitcoin wallets with also have broader implications. You know, our private keys could give us the rights to our own data and to share them with who and 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 with what we want. Um, and then, you know, I think I think we have a final war with you know who controls our data, right? So when you look at applications like voting results, right, uh, you can find many dictators in the world that constantly win elections under the shadow of of doubt. Right. And, and, and the issue is that that there's no you know, ledger of data that everybody can validate. Right. So I think on multiple fronts, um, this revolution's kind of started something. And, and I, I think one of our goals or, or at least I can say for myself with Bitcoin radio is to protect it. Right. Get everybody together, get everybody's voices involved, unmask what's really happening. Um, and I, I, I think that, you know, you, you could probably consider there's a, there's a few phases of what we've gone through. Maybe one was a honeymoon phase. Uh, now maybe we're kind of entering like a, a black market phase where people are starting to you know, really overly regulate. Um, we might get to a competition phase, like stuff like Libra and, and governments and large organizations coming in. Uh, and then kind of like the final battle. So I think the next few years is going to be very interesting. Hey, that gets me excited, just as you said. I, I'm going to reference uh, one of the quotes that Brian Armstrong had. Brian Armstrong, for those of you who uh, who know him, I mean, he's obviously the, the CEO of Coinbase. Um, uh, I think his quote was something along the lines of, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. And that that's a really good starting point for where I personally believe we are right now, right? Is uh, they did laugh at us, right? They ignored us. Now, now we're starting to hear this fight, right? And the win is coming. And you know the 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 one way I can say that that Bitcoin is so safe in all of this war is that you can't call in the CEO of coin of uh, excuse me a Bitcoin to Congress. You know they got Facebook up there sitting in there asking questions, right, Pat? You know like oh wait maybe we shouldn't allow this to happen. Oh big tech maybe they shouldn't be allowed to tokenize. Well what are you going to tell Bitcoin? You, who are you going to call in? What employees do they have, right? And so we're we're in this we're in this space right now where Bitcoin is the standard and as we've we've given uh, respect to it you know in the name bitcoin radio this this episode is called the war and we are not only fighting a war we're fighting the war for the next generation to fight the war because this isn't stopping anytime soon until we literally break the cycle and i know me and you may differ on a few political issues pat but i think it all comes down to the same thing and that is is everything fair right now i mean is anything fair right now it's everything is stacked actually against us. In my personal opinion, I can say it like this. If I'm going to believe in something, I want to believe in something that I think has the opportunity to never be manipulated. Before I even start getting into quantum computing or you know the, the potential issues that Bitcoin might have in the future, right now in front of us is this key, this key to everybody's future of self-regulation to a certain extent. And I'm not an anarchist. I believe in government. I believe humans want to regulate themselves. I believe humans are comfortable regulated and on a, on a certain level. But when we get too big, too powerful, when, when government gets too big and too powerful, the intent as innocent and as realistic and as, as they might have thought it was back then, it has evolved and morphed into something that we've kind of lost our own control of. I mean, we vote for these people, right? But the system has taken over and whether it's the, and obviously we're speaking from an American perspective here, but whether you're Republican or Democrat, you're, you're still fighting each other. There's so much division. It almost feels like it's insurmountable at times. And you know what? That's exactly what they want you to think. That's exactly how they want you to feel. Divide and conquer is not just some cool little saying to, to insinuate that people are dividing and conquering. It's the effing truth. And that's what's happening. That's where we are today. I mean, Pat, what do you what do you see as Bitcoin's standstill principles here? What is it that makes you so attracted to the space? It, it it changes the world in principle. You know, I, I something I've been kind of telling people lately is is, it, and and I'm not sure everybody in the world grasps it, but it, there's a very unique I think tie in to, uh, Bitcoin that's that's very specific. And I think, we, you know, let's look at uh, uh, the United States policy, right? Uh, sometimes they drop bombs on countries or drones. Uh, other times with some of their more powerful enemies, what they do with countries like North Korea and Russia is that they, they, they sanction them, right? And if we, if we inspect, inspect what a sanction is, uh, they're essentially cutting them off from the global banking system. So they freeze their bank accounts and they freeze their ability to wire money. 
Well, the way these people wire money as there's a there's a system uh, named with an acronym called SWIFT, and some of the listeners might be might be familiar with it. Uh, it's it's one of uh, Ripple's biggest uh, value adds. They're trying to kind of replace the SWIFT banking system. Yep. Well, well, you know, SWIFT is a series of computers that is sending money from one bank to another with a bunch of centralized banks. Well, once and you're already starting to read read a lot of news like this. You know how how can America sanction Iran? How can they sanction? Russia or North Korea and try to freeze billions of dollars when these people can come with a USB stick and move $10 billion in a coffee shop, right? And you get to this point where this core technology is really striking at the heart of some very powerful people, right? And and, and I think if we look at why, the why is because now we trust it, right? We've moved billions of dollars back and forth with Bitcoin and it appears that it's you know it's it's, it's we trust it now right we, we we when we send that money we're like 99.9% sure that it's going to get where it needs to go and if there's ever a panic in bitcoin so there might be a world one day where the technology proves to have a fault right and you mentioned earlier the quantum computers in, in the various ways uh, in the future we might have issues as long as we trust it then it's something that we feel comfortable utilizing Right. Once it's something that people feel comfortable utilizing, then the only thing stopping adoption is a variety of, of other factors, right? Marketing, ease of use, uh, you know, educating older or younger generations about the technology. Uh, and then, then the, the adverse effects are very big for a lot of entities, right? And, and we find that a lot of those entities are very powerful, right? They're the ones with the tanks. They're the ones with the big banks. Didn't mean to rhyme that, but it was pretty cool. Um, Keep it going, bro. Let, these people, I think, this is this terrifies them, right? Like they, they, they lose a lot of their power, and 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 once that happens, you know, you put you put an animal in a corner, you might not like the results, and absolutely, that that might be what we're staring at pretty quickly. Well, and just to the point, like I had mentioned just a little bit ago, how you can't call Satoshi Nakamoto into Congress, and if you do, I mean, he's he's he or she or whoever is not showing up. Um, but I can say this: when you call, when you when you look around and see who just copycatted, you know, the cryptocurrency tech, the the blockchain tech. Guess who it was? It was Facebook, the most powerful social media organization in the world, Instagram and Facebook. I mean, and obviously Facebook owns Instagram. So this is a huge testament and credibility giver to where people are believing this this technology is going. And Bitcoin is the standard. We're stronger with the standard and it's not going anywhere. We have Bitcoin. And I can't go, I can't even begin to tell everybody what this means to me. Like when I think about the 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 10 years, 10 and a half years now that we've been around Bitcoin. As an entity, as a name brand, you know, everything from, you know, whether the good and the bad, including, you know, from the 10,000 Bitcoin pizza to Silk Road to Mt. Gox to Bitcoin going to $20,000 almost in 2017 to this 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 collapse 2018, which has happened before. And then this 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 rise out of the ashes like the Phoenix that's, you know, gets a little cliche at times. But I'm so proud of where Bitcoin has come. And the longevity and the credibility that it's brought in those 10 years. I mean, things can be around for 10 years and not matter. You know, I, for this to be around for, for Facebook to be sitting in front of Congress right now, explaining why they're building a cryptocurrency and, and then government being scared to death, being like, whoa, 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 hold up. We don't want you building no cryptocurrency. Take that blockchain technology somewhere else. This is not what you're going to be building. And, you know, Facebook's going there like, we'll just go to Malta. You know, and this has built this revolution. And now Facebook's a little sensitive of a subject. Obviously, we know about Cambridge Analytics and or Analytica and, you know, among other things that have happened in the uh, the transfer of our own personal data, which you had already brought up a second ago, Pat. Um, but let's talk a little bit about that, you know, and really hit this home. And again, people, Bitcoin Radio is here for you. We want to make this conversation different. We want to make the way that you listen and hear about cryptocurrency to be different than everything else that you've heard so far. And yes, there are some great voices in the space. There's some great people in the space, but they get repetitive and they don't always bring the value to the person who may need to know it the most. And that's the new person. And the person who's just getting started, the person who's not a developer, the person who works at nine to five or that shift work working at the plants. This is your podcast. 
and I want you here. I want you to believe in what we're doing, and I want to present this material in a, in a way in which it's not only appealing and entertaining, but it makes sense. It, it, needs to, it needs to resonate in you the same way that it has for us. I, I want to make this clear, too. It's not always going to be super serious. We're going to have fun. But we want to set the tone early. This is what you can expect from us. And if it, if it involves us, you know, bringing up sensitive subjects at times, we're going to do it. If it involves us, you know, like just basically explaining what's going on, we're going to do it. If we need to get high level, we got the folks to do it. It may not always be me. Pat, it may be you sometimes or Galen or somebody else who's who's on the team. And there's plenty of people in this space that have voices that are not being heard that need to be heard. And I'll, I'll go as far as to say this, Pat, is if we're not changing it up and if we don't have more voices in this space, it's going to get super echo chamber, which I think we've experienced a little bit of that already. And it's going to lead to just the same people doing the same thing. We're never going to get through to that. And everybody's going to know what everybody's talking about, but nobody else can get in or break in because they're, they're, they're so far behind and nobody's willing to explain it. That's what we're combating right now. It's not just a war on, on big tech or big government. It's sometimes a war within ourselves where we have to realize this, this space still has to grow. We don't need to be we don't need to be assholes to people who haven't got in yet. We need to explain and recognize that it may not be so easy for that person to understand. Otherwise, they would already be in. I remember the first time I heard about Bitcoin. Guess what? I was like, what? No way. Internet money? Come on. Little did I know I was going to base my entire career around what Bitcoin was doing. And I think it's really special for us to have these opportunities right now. Patrick, what do you, what do you look forward to in this? Like, what do you see this going? Um, I, I have very high hopes for it. I, I, I think, um, like you mentioned, right, if you would have looked back 10 years ago or so, you would have not believed where we were today, right? Maybe some people did. I, I think when you when you look at the first Genesis block, you can see one of the first code commits that's, that Satoshi, whoever that is, made. Uh, and, I, and I'll read it. It's, it's that January 3rd, 2009. Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. So this is what launched Bitcoin, right? This is what was in their mind. We have not had a recession since 2008, right? We have not had a global recession. So if there's one coming up down the line, if this is how it started, we can only imagine how, how fast it's going to move right Absolutely. in the next phase when people are, are, are looking for for new ideas and, and, and because of fear that they're, they're finally open to it. You know, what I look for, and, and I think I've had an interesting perspective, uh, you know, I got into it from the engineering standpoint. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with uh, one of my partners, Galen Danziger, he's the CTO of kind of our group of companies. Um, you know, we built a very strong internal ethos from what we've worked on uh, to really see execution in this space, right? And and I think uh, when we look at Bitcoin, we see a lot of the experiment has worked. Uh, then when we look at other aspects, we can maybe come to the conclusion that they haven't so far, right? Uh, you had a lot of money raised through ICOs and not a lot of things delivered. Uh, this brought a, a real, I think, uh, dark view on the market for a while, right? Um, we're kind of riding out of that now, right? Where I think a new level of responsibility has kind of entered. Um, and we can see that a lot of the power is being centralized by a few big companies, right? The large exchanges, uh, the large custody solutions, right? They have a large, there's a large risk of, of a lot of this power going to only a few people, which I, I think if you were to look at the beginning or look at Bitcoin as a core outside of, of people kind of accumulating a lot of it and being able to move markets. Uh, the ethos of that was very different. You, you were, we're, we're entering this, this next level where we know Bitcoin works. We know some of the other technologies kind of work. We know that we've kind of had some success in our experiment of like funding things through new methods with coins and ICOs. Uh, we've also had some bad experiences there. So we kind of know what we don't want. Uh, we see some large companies coming up on the horizon that may or may not try to grab the whole pie for themselves. Uh, and then we kind of have this this unknown future, right? And, and, and I think a lot of it's going to roll out in the next 12 to 24 months. People are going to continue to doubt it, right? And if Bitcoin makes it another 24 months and the price stays stable or goes up, then I think we're on to something, right? Absolutely. And and my open questions kind of still remain, right? Even though we built you know, some amazing projects from our side and we continue to, to see a variety of cool applications. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of adoption in blockchain outside of, you know, Bitcoin and some of the other coins people are really using to trade, right? So there's this other side of a big promise and, and maybe, it, maybe it was never meant to pan out. Maybe the whole answer of this was only Bitcoin. That seems not uh, close to happening. 
Um, but we still have yet to prove, you know, can we make applications that u- utilize blockchain technology? Will people care about them? Um, and I think when we focus on on the caring portion, it, it, it really in a lot of ways comes down to, you know, ownership of data, right? And 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 maybe they won't be the fastest applications or the easiest to build or have all the bells and whistles of of the centralized ones, right? Competing with Facebook and Amazon and Microsoft and Apple. Um, but if we see benefits and we and we take our time to read the terms of service and, and maybe refuse them and look for another solution uh, in the blockchain world, uh, you know, I, I think humanity kind of has a choice here coming over the next few years. And, you know, if every human tomorrow were, were to go and buy a hundred dollars in Bitcoin, uh, you would see something pretty big change in this market 24 hours after that, right? So I think the future of of Bitcoin and blockchain technology really 100% falls down on the community. And uh, that's one reason why I'm very excited to be here. Uh, And and again, honored to be on this call with you, right? Because I think you have been lucky to speak to a very specific audience. I hope a lot of them are listening to this right now. Um, and, And, you know, from my side, I will say, join Joe, join what we're trying to do, because we want to take this conversation to a next level, get everyone together, and if we push, we can write our own future. If we don't push, then we'll probably be able to paint, you know, where it'll end up. So it's really up to everybody probably listening to this podcast. Fortunately, everybody, uh, Patrick's far too busy to, to take too much time to host uh, the podcast more than that, because that was beautiful, Pat. I, I almost lost the job there for a second. Um, that was exceptionally well said, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I'll, I'll, and we'll wind it down here too, Pat, because this is episode zero. And for those of you, this is your first introduction to us. Just wait, just wait. For those of you who've been part of this community in crypto coin trader and got a chance to know me and now have transitioned over and, and, and are listening and supporting this podcast, you, you have an idea of what to expect from me, right? I've been pretty consistent throughout my career in, in crypto and we're about to just bring this to the next level. We've got so many great ideas. We, we've, we've reached out some of the biggest names and the best people to represent the space. We want them to be here. We want to we want to get to know these people. We don't just want to ask them when their coin's going up. We want to know about these people. What makes them tick? How did they get here? Let's find out the real story, everybody, because I'll tell you what I'm going to. Pat? Thanks so much for coming on today, man. It, it means a lot. I don't know if we missed anything. Any, any final thoughts? No, just uh, just want to tell everybody, uh, definitely make sure to support Joe. And uh, if it's your first time hearing him, uh, you know, welcome to this conversation. If you've heard from him for a while, I think you know what he stands for. Uh, go to BitcoinRadio.com and, uh, you know, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all of those channels. And uh, just help us push this push this vision as much as we can. And uh, Joe, I think we're, we're, we've been lucky. We're, we're going to do some giveaways this week. Yes, we are. And I was going to end with that. And that is this, people. We're going to have some Bitcoin for y'all. We're going to have some T-shirts. And guess what else we're going to have? As you may have heard from our sponsor early on, um, we have some ledgers to give away, don't we, Pat? I think so. We got a lot, right? We got like 50 or something like that. There's a lot. It's like 50 or something like that. So um, for the for the lucky few who are watch or listening to us first, uh, they're up for grabs. And we will give you the details on that. You be checking us out. I think we'll announce it probably first in Crypto Coin Trader. But uh, it'll be all over our Twitter, everything else, if you're not part of that community yet. Although you should be. You should be. But uh, it's, it's not required to, to win. Anyways. All right. Bitcoin Radio. I'm so proud to have you here. I cannot wait to show you what's next. We will do this together. Till next time, everybody.